Yo, what up, good? This is your boy Shaky Bay. Now, we haven't uploaded in a hot minute. I know. We're going to catch up another time. I just want to get straight to the point and talk about this awesome and sweet paladin guide I have created for all of you. Now, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask down in the comments below. Also, you guys can feel free to join me on my community Discord, or you can follow me on Twitter and at me there and ask questions, and I will respond. Other than that, I will be streaming the game very soon, and when I do, there's also going to be another outlet for you guys to ask me any questions that is PvP related about the Paladin. In this video, I'm going to be going over our external settings and the internal settings. What I'm aiming at there is to give you guys a little bit of an FPS boost because the game does run on Unreal Engine 3, unfortunately, and helping mitigate any micro starters, getting us more FPS, is always going to be a huge help, right? I'm going to be going over the stats, your skill build, and in the skill build, we're also going to be going over the optional skills because there's not one way to play the Paladin. There's multiple ways to play it. I'm going to talk about your role as a Paladin, the combos, how to all in. And at the very end, I'm going to give you all some general tips. So if you guys are looking forward to the content, make sure to hit that sub button and leave a like down below. Now, if you guys are NVIDIA users, you guys are in luck. I can give you guys a little bit of external settings to help you guys out. Um, what I would recommend is that you guys come over here to your NVIDIA control panel. Come down to use my preference emphasizing. Come down to performance. Bring it all the way down. And then just bring it right back to using advanced 3D image settings. Once you guys are done, make sure you guys come over here to manage 3D settings. And this is where we are going to see the most performance boost out of anything so what I would I recommend you guys do just whatever setting I have here I want you guys to copy it if you have a setting that I don't have just leave it as is all right so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down now and you guys can feel free to pause the video at any time that way you guys can get some more FPS all right so I'm trying to hook y'all up I love this class and I want y'all to enjoy the Paladin 2 at its fullest all right, now that we're done here, let's go to in-game settings and go over there. All right, guys, now for the internal settings section. For those of you guys that might be annoyed by the UI here, if you guys press Alt-X, you can slowly hide the UI, which you guys might prefer for PvP. So um, I would strongly recommend that. Now for the next thing for your internal settings, what I'm going to recommend is that everyone comes down over to video and I would strongly recommend each and every person to tick on this 21 by 9 aspect ratio setting. What this setting is going to allow you guys to do, it's going to allow you guys to see left and right much better. It's going to give you guys more vision for PvP. Just, just to show you guys uh, how much it gives, I want you guys to look where my mouse cursor is. You see this greenery over here with the light post? I'm going to go ahead and tick this off and you guys are going to actually see that we can't even see most of the green anymore, right? So, um, whereas here, I can see this little post right here, but when I tick this back on, it's the same, right? But even here, you know, it's going to give you guys a vision advantage left to right. So, for those of you guys that are PvPing, I strongly recommend you guys to take the setting on. Now, I know 
I know that the black bars may be annoying, but the vision advantage is worth it. Trust me. I hope in the future they just change this, like they, they like give us a new camera setting. Because honestly, we really shouldn't have to do this, but for now, I recommend everyone to do it. Now in the settings tab, I would recommend you guys to turn off better depth of shield, indirect shadows, turn off bloom, and turn off motion blur. Distortion effect and flare effect, you can also turn this off, however I personally like them, so I just keep it on. And for your screen effect settings, you guys can feel free to tamper with this however you guys would like. I'm okay right here, so I just keep it as is. So another thing you guys might want to know, if you guys press control and you use your scroll wheel, you can scroll through different mouse cursor colors, which is actually pretty huge. So, um, you know, this guys can help you guys out a lot. So I like blue, so I use that one. Other than that, you guys can come over down to the accessibility tab. You can change your cursor size if you guys would like. You can apply that. You can see it's a little bit bigger. I like mine on normal personally. And for those of you guys that may be colorblind, this can also help a lot, obviously. So um, just be aware that these settings exist and they can definitely help you guys out. Now, guys, this is very important. Come down to the gameplay tab right here. Go to controls and display. Scroll down until you guys see combat settings. And what you guys are looking for is this right here. Skill screen shake. Untick this. It's going to help you guys out in a PvP a lot. If you guys were managed to somehow miss this when you guys made your character, um, I do have a solution for you. That should save a lot of you guys. Um, you, see, you guys see the setting right here where it's attack with right click. You guys can check it or uncheck it depending on how you started the game. And this is going to allow you guys to do that legacy league movement. So I actually press right click to move my, uh, my cursor, to move my character around I mean. And I use left click to attack. So um, that's more of the league play style if you guys play a lot of league. If not, you guys don't care for it, I'll leave it as is. But for those of you that do, hopefully I saved y'all right there. Now guys, just as a quick disclaimer, the skill build is going to be the way I like to play Paladin. There is a little bit of different skills and tripods you guys can take. However, it's going to be the way I like to play Paladin, so I'm going to recommend that to you guys. Once I'm done showing you guys the way I like to play, I'm going to give you guys the optionals that you guys can choose to opt in for. And... That way, you guys can decide for yourselves. However, here is my skill build for you guys. Go ahead and press escape, come over to the character section, and go over to your book of coordination. Now guys, for your stats, I want you guys to take 750 swiftness, 200 endurance, 49 domination, and 1 crit. Now for this part of the video where I go over the skills, I want you guys to come over to the Trixion so you guys can actually try this out for yourselves. So press F2. Song of the Trixion, come talk to Beatrice, Training Grounds, press OK. And then once you guys are in, you guys are going to be able to test my skill build without having to save it. And then once you guys kind of figure out what you guys want, you guys can exit this, come to the Book of Coordination, and then you guys can input the skill build. So once you guys are in here, go ahead and do Scarecrow, Normal, and Summon it. If you guys want to keep testing the skills, you can use Recover Resources to get your ZNX up. And you can also reset your cooldowns right here to test this up faster. Now, without further ado, the skill build. Now, for the first ability on my Q, I like to take Executor Sword and I put it to level 4. And I use the Excellent Mobility Tripod. I will say that the Quick Pace Tripod can also work and is going to be your preference. However, for me... I like the excellent mobility tripod because I think that Paladin already has more mobility and I want to make my engages super strong for when I want to carry my team. So with this skill, it's just pretty much going to serve as an engage. And if you look with this tripod, it actually covers a good amount of distance. It gives a great amount of distance, it's a combo ability, you can cast it twice, and it can be a decent combo extender for when people have already knocked down your enemy. And you can just go in there and extend the CC with that ability. For our W, I like to take level 10 on dash slash. This is a pretty much must take skill. Um, I take quick pace, sustain, enhancement, and ruthless sprint. For the most part, I believe these tripods to be pretty much the only ones to run um, for the most part. So quick pace is going to give you guys 15% additional move speed, giving you guys that extra gap close. Sustain Enhancement gives you the extra 1 second sprint duration, it's actually pretty huge. 
And then of course, Ruthless Sprint, which is going to allow you guys to not have any collision. And when you actually collide with someone, it'll knock them up. So what's actually really cool about this tripod and this skill, it is a great engaging tool uh, for the Paladin. Now you do have to be careful because it's only a super armor paralysis immunity. So if they have any hard CCs, you will get caught out. So you do have to be careful when you use this and use it willingly. Now, I'm going to go ahead and summon a couple of these scarecrows so I can demonstrate what I mean. So when you're going out to catch people in your 3v3s, with one sprint, if they are all bunched up, you can knock up all three people. And then when you end the sprint, you can do a knock up to whoever you like, leaving them prone for anything. If your team collapses on this, it's mint. If they don't, well, you're paladin, you're broken, we need to be nerfed, honestly, and you can just literally spam AoEs and you will kill everybody. Because, you know, balance class. Now for our E, I like to take Heavenly Blessing. This is pretty much a must take on the Paladin for PvP in my opinion. I like to take the Agile Cast Tripod, Valor, and Heavenly Requiem. And of course, we're going to max it out to level 10. Now Heavenly Blessings can serve a few different purposes in PvP. First and foremost, I want you guys to take note of the hitbox on this skill. It is huge. As you guys can see. Now, this skill does provide a pretty useful CC. On, a, on the other hand, if you guys read the skill, the skill tooltip, it also applies minus 20% damage received for 8 seconds. So let's say that your whole team is CC'd right now and you're coming in to peel. Let's use the two enemies, right? You can come in, pop this, CC them. Maybe your teammates are being CC'd. And let's see if you get CC'd. Well, everyone's now taking 20% less damage, and that is huge, right? Also, this skill hits very hard. You can use it as a damage ability and a CC extender. On the third note, you can also use it as a footsie or punishing skill. So, let's say you're fighting a blade. You know how blades love to jump at you, right? Well, let's say right as they're about to jump at you, right? You can use your charge to evade their skill. And when you're at this distance, you pop your E and you hit them and then you can pop your Q and knock them up and then they are prone to being comboed. So that is why this skill is just so good. It has multiple different uses. For the tripod, the second row tripod, there is a little bit of uh, your choice here. You can either take the Valor tripod, which is going to give your whole team a 15% attack power boost, which is huge, right? And you can also take the Perseverance Tripod, which will pretty much, instead of get, making a 20% damage reduction, it's now going to become 31% damage reduction. So that's where the you know choice comes in. I took Valor because I already have Holy Protection, which I'm going to talk about later, the way I like to run that skill, in my kit. And I want to be able to carry the fights and snowball them. So... Let's say we get a huge CC, I can go in, pop this, and now my whole team has 15% extra damage, and we can just nuke them. And that's what I mean by snowballing fights. Paladin is truly a carry class. For our R, I like to take charge, I put it at level 10. This is also just going to be a must-have, it's just a very useful skill. We like to take excellent mobility for the movement distance, we take shining protection, to give you some of that extra shielding and then we're going to be taking ambush attack which pretty much makes the charging stub attack into a rising slash which is going to knock them up in the air and giving you a little bit more damage this skill is great for landing those lined up cc's i'm telling you man it's beautiful so it has a lot of range on it and i mean you know it's a float you guys can see that i mean also the hitbox is actually rather large. Let's see if I can demonstrate this for you guys. Pretty nasty setups with this. I mean, imagine hitting that in, you know, PvP, and then all of a sudden you just go in. Oh, mind him. Mind him. Mind him up. Mind him up. And for our A, we take Holy Sword to level 10. 
The tripods I list here are pretty much going to be your mandatory tripods, as well as just being a staple in all PvP builds. You want positioning, vital point hit, and condensed energy. The reason why we take positioning is that it speeds up the skill. This is a very important skill in the Paladin kit. Now it is a skill shot, it has a linear um, a hitbox, and it hits quite hard. Now this is a skill that you don't want to miss. You want to try to land this skill as much as possible in PvP. It is a very important skill. Now what's crazy about this skill too, is that when you pop your Z buff, it hits tremendously hard. It is ridiculous. I mean, you can just chunk people down from 40% HP with this skill. It's insane. So, this is the skill you guys don't want to miss. Use it sparingly. Because when it's down, it is going to be a pretty large cooldown and it's definitely going to hurt in PvP. So, with our Holy Sword skill, make sure we're comboing this correctly. It is one of your hardest hitting skills. Now, for our S, we take Holy Protection to level 10. And we take the Quick Pace Tripod, we take Robust Protection, and we take Thunderous Protection. Now, let me explain why I put this in my build. Now, Quick Pace is going to give everyone a movement speed buff of 15%. Robust Protection, it'll take away the shield duration. However, the shield will now be 40% of their HP, which is huge. On top of that, we take Thunderous Protection, to squeeze out some more damage in those fights. We don't take Vow of Light because it's going to take the cooldown up 10 seconds. And I think having that sh that shield, you know, 10 seconds sooner every match is very important in my opinion. And with the Thunderous Protection ability, because you're using it as a oh shit button, a lot of the times it's uh, good. And I'm going to explain why. So when you pop your shield, when this explodes, it's going to create damage. Now in PvP, this is going to hit anywhere from 3 to 6k depending if it crits or not. And the reason why this is so good, and I swear to you, what's crazy is that when you pop the shield, that aura goes on all of your teammates, right? So let's say we're in a fight where, again, we're in a scenario where everyone's CC'd. You can E and S, right? Everyone does their all-in, and by the time the all-in is over your shield will explode on three separate people doing three times the damage, which is huge. So because you use this as an oh shit button to save your teammates or to get into an engage or a hard scuffle to start trading, uh, yeah, this is going to put a lot of damage on the field as well as giving you some support utility. So between our E and our S, uh, we're kind of saving our teammates from messing up a little bit, right? So, uh, that's actually why I take the uh, um, attack damage percentage tripod on Heavenly Blessings. Because I'm already taking Heavenly Protection and I'm taking 40%. You know, as a carry, you have two jobs when you're in those 3v3s. You want to, one, prevent your teammates from dying. Two, you want to put out some damage, right? So, this is why I take Holy Protection. For our D, we take Wrath of God. This is going to be a must-have skill. And the tripods I recommend here are going to be mandatory. So, we're taking White Thunderstroke, Tenacity, and Light Guardian. This skill is pretty much a get off of me button. Or it's to fill in some AoE damage when you're going into dive on, on teammate CCs to follow up. So, summon a Scarecrow here. As you can see, the angel comes down and then it, it's going to knock them away. Also, the hitbox is pretty good. So, uh, this is A, used to get people off of you, or B, as damage filler, or C, as a combo ender. And finally, we have another mandatory skill, Execution of Justice. We take it to level 10. We are going to be taking Forward Attack, Strength Release, and Light Explosion. Now, in the first uh, tripod tree here, 
you guys can actually have a little bit of some situationals here. So you can either take forward attack or you can take bulwark. Either one is going to work. So bulwark is going to give you a shield. So it's going to give you extra shielding on your AOE. Or you can take forward attack, which is going to give you a little bit of a chasing capability on it. And like I said, I want to play that aggressive playstyle. So I like to take the forward attack ability because I already have shielding on my R. And this way I can use this skill to really get in there. So if people are running away and I have this down, this down, and this down, I can sometimes really get in there with my F because it pushes me forward and it gets me in there. Now with the last tripod, you're going to create a really huge explosion, which is huge. This is a really good uh, damage filler, and it hits amazingly. So, a short synopsis of our abilities. Our Q is going to be an engage, our W is an engage, our R is an engage, and our F can also be considered as an engage. Our E and S are damage fillers and or oh shit buttons. Our A is our one of our hardest hitting skills that we never want to miss. Our D, F, E, and A is our DPS. And let's go ahead and talk about our piety buffs. We have two, our Z and our X. Our Z will increase the range on all of our blue skills by 30%, as well as increase our damage by 40%, which is crazy, right? And what's nuts is that you can pop your Z and your E and the damage stacks. It's actually broken. Okay, so uh, pretty much when you pop this, make sure you're eased up so you can get that extra damage in there. When you guys are in this mode, you're going to get increased range and damage on all of your blue skills. So when you guys pop this, you're looking to get aggressive and get in there and collapse on it. You pretty much only want to pop this skill when the enemy team has already wasted all of their CC breaks, meaning their dodge roll, and then on the floor when they roll out of that. So... When this is popped, I mean, just look at the range on your F, okay? Look at the hitbox on this. It's gigantic. You guys see that? It's huge. Not only that, but the damage is higher. Also, your Holy Sword is going to hit really hard. And if it crits, I mean, just say goodnight. If that shit crits, boys, say goodnight. Your R will hit decently hard. So will your Q. And so will your W. What you guys are looking to do when this is popped, you're going to pop your Z, pop your E, get in there. Pop everything, blow your whole kit on them. You will snowball an entire fight by yourself. Now, if you are in a game and you know, you're taking notice that your team is doing really well, you're stomping the enemies, and they're collapsing on CCs, right as a CC starts and a dive is set up and again all their dodge rolls are gone and they have no more CC breaks you will pop your X which is going to give a 10% damage to everyone on your team as long as they are in within this holy aura they are going to receive the damage buff so make sure that they are in it very huge okay now when you guys are in this mode you're going to pop your X, your E, and your shield. That way, they can get in there and do some serious damage. And then, as normal, go in there and pop your damage, and you're good to go. And now we should probably talk about the two ultimates that you guys can run. So, both ultimates are viable in 3v3s. However, it's really up to you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the ultimate I use. And you've seen in my clips. I like to use Alethane's Light. This ultimate does a ass load of damage. Okay? It does more damage than the other one, and it also allows for a AoE CC. Now, what's also really nice about it is if you're good at predicting enemy movements and behaviors, it can also act as a ranged engage for your team. So, it literally travels. It traveled. It's like a heat-seeking missile. Okay, so um, definitely like a viable skill. As you guys can see, it's gonna keep traveling until there. So definitely another skill you guys can take a look at. The other ultimate is more of a utility ultimate. So it does a little bit less damage. However, in 
PvP. When you land, you will create a shield of 40% for all of your party members for 10 seconds. So, you go in, and boom. 10 seconds. Now, the reason why I don't like this ability is because, you know, while the shield may be big and the utility is good, it just does less damage. Also, if you were to use it as an engage, it's pretty reactable. Like, if you look, I mean, as soon as they go up in the air, you can really react to that and just get out. So really, all you really have left for it is to use it as a damage filler. And if you're going to use your ultimate as a damage filler, why not take the one that does more damage? Especially if you're looking to carry, right? So really, um, that was my logic on it. However, both work. It's up to you. You can use either one. They both work and they're both fine. But that's my logic around the ultimates. For the build that I use, I prefer Ali Thane's Light much more. Because it just it has more utility for those 3v3 fights. Now let's go ahead and talk about the optional skill build, which I believe you guys can replace in my in my in my build. So the two replaceable skills, arguably, is the Executor Sword and the Holy Protection. You will not see every Paladin running the same build that I do. It's honestly up to you guys. What you guys will want to do is you can swap out the Holy Protection skill and you can run Light of Judgment. So um, what this skill is, you're going to take it to level 10. You're going to take Swift Fingers, Wide Hit, and then you're going to take Righteous Light. What this pretty much acts as is another catch for the Paladin. As you guys can see, that does a knockback. So, um, very useful skill you guys can use. Uh, more typically so, you're going to see this more run commonly in the 1v1 builds for Paladin. I prefer the shield skill so I can carry on my fights, obviously. And I feel like with my build, this is enough engaging. However, if you guys feel like you don't really have a use for that uh, shield, feel free to take Light of Judgment. This skill works, and it's great. And it's going to give you guys a pretty good engage tool as well. So if you guys choose to opt out for the shield and you guys want to focus on God Sent Law, you absolutely can. Again, these tripods are totally up to you. However, when I like to run this ability, I like to take Enhanced Decree, Lightning, and Light's Guardian. And pretty much it looks like this. Now again, because there's not only one way to play the Paladin, there is another way to look at the skill as well. Instead, you can actually pop wide angle, you can get grace, and then you can put shield. And this now becomes a, a, uh, a, a uh, teammate saving ability. So, the AoE is larger, and the way you can use this is that when your teammates get caught, you pop this over their body, right? And what this does is that it's going to create a shield of 10% of their max HP when it's dropped. But, this is what's huge, okay? When you put this down, it's negative 70% damage for one second. Really, it's up to you, however you guys want to choose this. But, I just wanted to put it out there that there is a little bit of choosing you guys can do on the build. Now, another one that you guys can take a look at is going to be Holy Explosion. You take Swift Fingers, Wide Explosion, and Prepared Explosion. And this is going to inflict a pretty large AoE. I mean, just look at it. In PvP, it can be pretty troll. However, uh, it does work. I've seen a couple high elo paladins run it. And that's the cool thing about, you know, this game. You can kind of do a little bit of give or take here. Most of, of the build that I have is going to be kind of like the way you, you know, you have to run it a certain way. However, there are a maximum of two to three skills you guys can totally swap out. So, hopefully I have opened you guys up to a little bit more of building the Paladin. Um, you guys can build it my way, or you can choose some of those situational skills. Now, pretty much your role as a paladin is to try to keep your teammates alive as much as you can. However, like I said, in those 3v3s, you are a carry. Paladin is absolutely busted right now. It is definitely an S-tier class for PvP. 
it is one of the best classes in the game. Even when the new classes come out, you are still going to see Paladin in S tier. If this class does not get nerfed by tomorrow, I'm freaking out. It's busted. I'm telling you, it's busted, okay? Give it a shot and see what you guys think. And now we are going to be getting into the combo section. And also, this is where I'm going to be piecing out from the voiceover. So, we're going to have a combo section with all the skills labeled, and I want you guys to enjoy that. Other than that, guys, I want you guys to enjoy the combos, practice them out. They're not very hard. Paladin is a pretty easy class, to be honest. And, you know, make sure you all hit that sub button. If you guys enjoyed this guide, follow me on Twitch and join the community Discord and follow me on Twitter. Without further ado, enjoy the combos. Yeah. 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 Yeah.